Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Layla, and today I'm gonna to be going over my budget for January 2024. We are about to enter a new year, so gotta make, make my budget for January, of course. Things are going to look a little bit different on my spreadsheet, and I'm excited to show y'all and to just be budgeting this way. I will explain it as I go. With my budget videos, I also always set financial goals for the month, but I don't I don't really know my financial goals for January 2024 just because I it's like save, save as much as possible. I will be maxing out my Roth IRA, but that's because I already have the money saved for that. I do have savings goals for my specific sinking funds that I mentioned in my 2024 goals video. So I would say it's really just about saving as much as I can between the top two that I'm prioritizing for, for January. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hop to my spreadsheet and we'll go through my budget. Okay, so this is what January is looking like. And typically with these videos, I pop up just one single spreadsheet onto the screen. But for January and moving forward, as long as I'm working my full-time job and I'm obviously gonna be making money from my business, I am going to separate the two. And my goal with this, so I guess this could be a goal for January, is that all of my business income is going to pay for my expenses. So I, I will show that in just a moment. And then my full-time job income, my W-2 income, is going to be obviously for my 401k. I still have to pay taxes on that. But otherwise, the rest of that, the bulk of my income from my full-time job will go to savings, which is a very cool position to be in. I feel like I am earning enough from my business to cover my expenses. And then that means my, my full-time job can just be savings and then that's going to allow me to save up more for my sabbatical and yeah well you, you get the idea so let's go ahead and go through these numbers so first up on the left hand side this is my business income i am recording the what i expect for gross earnings in january and that is probably about forty five hundred dollars so january i typically end up earning more because of december so in december i usually have higher ad revenue from youtube sometimes from my blog and even with coaching like I, I do get a lot more coaching clients toward the end of the year and even into january so i usually end up making a little bit more at the beginning of the year this year i think it will be for sure at least it'll be four thousand five hundred at a minimum which is crazy and i'm so grateful to be able to say that because that is more than i take home from my, my full-time job. So obviously, because of that, I am easily able to pay for all of my expenses, like my everyday expenses, housing, food, etc., with my business income. Now, I didn't put anything here for extra income. I typically include it within the two of these, but I, I don't know. I, I think I want to play it safe and go as low as I think it will be. So 4,500 is a number I'm comfortable with. And then of course, if I earn anything else outside of my business, that counts as extra income and that will just help with, with paying for, for things. Now, as far as all of these expenses go that we're seeing on the left-hand side, I don't expect to be pulling from my sinking funds, but if I have to, then I will if anything comes up, depending on what I end up spending. But as of right now, I don't expect to pull from my sinking funds for, for this section. So as for my expenses that I'm going to be paying for from my business income, first up would be my taxes sinking fund. So this is still coming from my business income. This is still taxes specific to my business because of course I have to pay quarterly estimated tax payments. So I do set this money aside so that I can pay it every quarter and I'm budgeting about 800 for January. Next would be donating, budgeting 100. I may do a little bit more, but for now I'm just gonna leave it at 100. Purple section is still housing, just like it's been for all of 2023. The first one is house slash utilities, should be about $1,117.50. It's probably, I'm just gonna round it up or down depending on what it actually ends up being just because one of our bills always comes in a couple of days into the new month. So I, I'm never sure until that day comes. Next is household in general. This is things that I need to purchase around the home, cleaning supplies, toilet paper, paper towels. I usually budget this at 100 per month. I don't think we'll be buying furniture for the house in January, but if we do, I will pull from my sinking fund. I think it's more so gonna happen in February, but I don't know. It's just every month with furniture has been kind of like, oh yeah, let's get that type of thing. 
So if that comes up, then obviously I would go over budget, but I really don't think otherwise outside of that, I don't think I would go over a hundred in household. Orange section is for food. So groceries keeping at 400, food out keeping at $75. And then gas for my car, I'm bumping up to $80. So usually I budget like 60 for the month, but I think in January I'm gonna be, I know that I have one further drive in January. And I don't know, I feel like I'm just gonna end up getting gas two to three times. I only got gas once in December, and usually when that happens, the following month I have to go a couple of times for whatever reason. But yeah, 80 should be fine. That's, that's still pretty good overall. Health slash beauty, budgeting $250. I do have a massage scheduled in January. Oh, that's another drive. I have to drive further for that. I don't have any other appointments, which is good. Um, but yeah, a massage, and then if I need to purchase like supplements or vitamins, but I'm not too sure yet, so I just went with 250, so it may be a little bit lower. Dogs, budgeted 162 and one cent per usual. Business, I'm expecting about 500. This could be lower, I think it'll be 500. There's a couple of exciting things that I'm planning to do in January and pay for, so I believe 500 should cover that. If I go over, then that's fine. And then obviously I can write those off as business expenses and it, it saves me in taxes. Next is Netflix. That's still $23.48, but my sister does pay for her portion of that. Gym, $39.99. And then finally, personal, because I'm not doing a low spend year or no spend year for 2024. I just budgeted this at $250 for January, just because there's a couple of things that I probably will buy, uh, but I don't know yet. <laughs> so yeah, you can see all together, this totals to $3,897.98 of total spend. And that leaves me, if I, if I earn $4,500 from my business, and I set aside my taxes, I pay for my business expenses, that's all included here, but then I still have money left over. So what I'm thinking, obviously this is what's left over with my budget, so if I go over then I may not have as much, but even if I have like 200 or 300 left over, what I'm thinking to do is roll that into the next month to budget with. So it's just gonna be like a rollover section that I'm gonna add into here. And the reason I wanna do this is because some months I don't earn as much as January. I don't know what to expect for 2024 to be honest, but I don't think in February I'll earn $4,500 like I did in January. So I think it would be helpful for either I'm gonna do that, like roll it over or just put it toward my business sinking fund, which I will talk about in a minute. All my sinking funds are over on this side. And then that way, if I end up short on cash for whatever reason for this section, I can pull from that business sinking fund or yeah, I don't really know yet. I'm, I'm just kind of, this is the first time I'm doing this budget. So just rolling with it. Overall though, I think it's pretty cool because this shows that I can probably take my business full time. The, the thing is that not everything would be included here. Like if I were to leave my full time job, I would need to pay for my own insurance and me making $4,500, I mean, it would cover it, but things would be tight and I don't wanna have to sacrifice too much. You can see already that me spending everything here doesn't include any savings. So there's no travel sinking fund, there's no emergency fund, nothing Nothing is going to savings in this section or even uh, investment. So that is where I'm like hesitant to leave my job, but I know that if I were to take my business full-time, I would probably be able to increase my income because right now it's just part-time. But yeah, that's the, that's really the whole point of all of this, just to see what's, what's possible with just my business income. And then obviously if I'm able to put a huge amount of savings, that's gonna be just super helpful. So let's go to this right-hand side where we're gonna talk about my work income. For my full-time job, I am currently a Salesforce consultant. And if you're interested in transitioning to a tech job, specifically in the Salesforce industry, I do have a few videos focused on that. I will have them linked down below, as well as the Talent Stacker program, which is what really helps me to get into this job. Now you can see here that work income, I am putting my gross work income. So that is going to be 5,880. For January, I don't expect to have a pay increase. From my sinking funds, 9,200. So this is coming from two different sinking funds and I will talk about where these come from as I go through my expenses for this section. 
First up would be my 401k. Since I am looking at my gross income, I do wanna make sure that I'm including my 401k and my taxes because then I could see how much I'm putting to my 401k and y'all can see that too. And then what I'm putting to taxes. I think overall it just makes sense to do all, like all of them as gross earnings. And then yeah, this just allows me to see everything visually a little bit better. For my 401k, I'm budgeting 1764 and all that I did for this I believe was take 30% of my gross income I don't know yet what it's going to be though because I'm not able to when I put in the percentage it's, it's still showing what I would contribute for 2023 on my 401k website so I'll have to wait until like January 1st to see what this actually will be each month the reason I'm doing 30% is because one of my financial goals for 2024 is to max out my 401k, assuming I stay at my job the full year, and we can do 23,000 in the year, and that should be about 30% of my pay. I think I'll be able to do a little bit less, especially because I get a bonus in March, and whatever I set for my 401k, that's also taken out from the bonus pay. And then for my taxes, which is next, I also have no idea. So I just put this at a thousand. So when I put more to my 401k, it does lower what I pay in taxes, but I have never done just like the 30%. So I don't know what that will look like. Uh, this could be higher or it could be a little bit less. All this blue section are my sinking funds. So first up, gift sinking fund, that's staying at 75. My car slash car maintenance sinking fund, I am bumping that up to $350. I talked about this in my 2024 spend plan and I was saying how I want to put like, I think I said four, 4,000 for the year. So I just want to bump this up because in the future, one day I will need to purchase a car. I'm going to try to make my car last as long as possible, the current one I have, but I just want, I, I would feel more comfortable having more set aside for car and car maintenance. Car insurance sinking fund. This is 115. I I just paid my premium, my six month premium in November. Um, I did have to bump this up just because car insurance is going up and hopefully 115 per month will, will cover everything. Next is my beauty sinking fund. And this one is getting 3000. So I know, I think in my goals video, I said that I would prioritize like putting money to my emergency fund and then travel. Like my beauty sinking fund was last but I decided I wanted to just complete one. Like if I can complete a full sinking fund for the year, that would be amazing. So this is where one of my other sinking funds comes in. So y'all know for December, like November and December, I was saving in a sabbatical sinking fund. Uh, for December, that's probably gonna end at like $2,200 or so. So I'm expecting to put that 2,200 to my beauty sinking fund and then I'll finish it out. Like if I need to put 800 or 700, whatever, then I'll finish that out, get the full 3000 and then that sinking fund is done and I'll, I'll be able to use that when I take my business full-time slash sabbatical. Next is my travel sinking fund, which for January I budgeted zero. So for now, I am just gonna like focus on one at a time. I think that's just how I prefer to do things now. When I was paying off debt, I was tackling multiple things at once, which at that time I felt more, I just enjoyed doing that more. But now that I'm debt free, I prefer doing things one by one for some reason. So travel sinking fund gets zero. Emergency fund also gets zero, but eventually I'll get to those. And then finally, my business sinking fund is the next one that I'm going to prioritize, I guess because it's the smallest. I'm kind of doing the snowball method, but for saving. So this is my next smallest sinking fund goal. I want 4,000 here. And I think I should be able to put about 1,500 to that based off of what I'm earning from my full-time job. So yeah, decent amount to savings. And then I'll be able to knock out one of my sinking fund goals for 2024 and then make a big chunk of progress in one of the others. And then the final thing listed here is my Roth IRA, which is $7,000. I'm just gonna do my lump sum of $7,000 to my 2024 Roth IRA in January. And this is also where my sinking fund comes in because y'all know that I saved up 7,000 already in 2023 so that I'm able to do this in January, 2024. So yeah, that is included in this 9,200. Altogether, saving, investing, you know, I mean, if we have to take out the taxes here, but this is a lot of money, like over $13,000 that I will be saving and investing, which is crazy. Obviously, 2023 income helps with that as well. Like it's rolling over into 2024. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to start off strong, start the year off strong. 
And then you can see that I have a little bit of a cushion, $276. So if I do have cash left over, sometimes I have it roll over to the following month, or I will just put it, I'll put more to savings, so more to my business sinking fund likely. So as of right now, that is what I'm expecting for January. I think it's a good plan and we'll see how things go. I did make a kind of a big business decision just today, <laughs> which may affect January. So I don't know if this is what things are going to look like moving forward, um, but for January, this it's gonna be pretty similar, but things might have to be adjusted because of the decision that I made today and the changes that I made. But that's to be determined because I don't really know yet how it's going to affect things, so I will adjust when I need to. And that may even be mid-month, so the, the numbers will probably look pretty similar, but the layout may be a little bit different. Let me know if y'all have any questions. Otherwise, feel free to comment down below what any of your financial goals are for January. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. It really supports my channel, and I'll see you in my next one.